I came across this post, and then shortly after I came across this post, which basically encompasses my feelings the first time I really started studying to get a new job. Like, the whole idea that you're at a job for one, two, three, whatever many years, especially for me, it was my first job out of college. You feel like you're not good enough, you feel like you need to somehow magically study material, and you need to try to do a better job to move out of your house that's right next to the highway and people are beeping all the time. And it's annoying. I, I'd say two things that I don't like about the software industry. One is the fact that a lot of people think they're big brain individuals and they can like pretty much crap all over like new hires and people who don't know what a Docker image is. Like, oh, well, dude, you don't know that? You should know that. And then the other thing I don't like is the process around finding a new job. You just need to basically prove that your degree is actually worthwhile because almost every employer, whether it be a startup or a large company will basically not believe that you actually know what you're doing. You have to do a test, you have to do a technical interview. And throughout that process, you need to have 50% skill and 50% luck because you could get some problems wrong, but the interviewer likes you, gets a good vibe, you get an offer, or simply you're just so good that you don't need that much luck. You know, you just need someone to not be a sicko who's trying to be, you know, do this my way, solve it in my fashion. Uh, but with that being said, I'd say that if you're in a situation that you are trying to get a new job, you want to try to find a way to study for it, you don't know where to start, let's just say that you have a month or two, not a lot of time, but enough time for you to actually sit down and through part-time after hours at work, or even if you're a student, this might be helpful to do for about a month, is basically try to go through the top 75 blind questions that have been posted. This is something that an engineer made in 2018 towards the end of the year. He basically was trying to find a new job, he was studying, and he decided to share his list of most useful uh, problems that are existing in each field for arrays, for binary, for dynamic programming, graphs, etc. Now some of these might be super genial, some of these might be kind of like uh, like for the binary pieces I did it but I've never really seen anyone ask binary questions in an interview it doesn't seem that common but it might be good to know just to know um, and I'd say focus on the blind top 75 questions and what you want to gonna want to do with this is try to go through it maybe solve each problem of each piece and see what you're weak at and from there if you do have a little bit of time a little bit of bandwidth try to expand on it now what do I mean by this like for example one problem that I was doing recently is this uh, shortest path binary matrix. I was able to get a lot of the cases, but the thing that I'm weak in is the kind of proper breadth first search where you can go not only from top to bottom, left to right, but also left to right, up, down, whatever. Whatever the path exists, find it. And because of that, I basically uh, went to the leak code section that has all these different like... Um, uh, breadth first search problems and I'm also going to do this network delay time problem that I've done in the past where I've used Dijkstra and I'm just gonna go through see what I'm weak at what do I need to know because sometimes for this interview prep you don't even know what you don't know I mean for me uh, just studying and doing these different things for the first time it was extremely helpful and that's why I'm saying if you've never studied for a software engineering interview where you spent maybe three months for me personally it took about like nine months before I was confident um, it was basically like five months of filling in gaps and then about four months of studying and getting ready for companies. So again, if you don't have a lot of time, this might be something you want to skip out on. Maybe you just feel like you want to do enough to basically feel confident and not be super duper well versed. That's fine. It's up to you. I'd recommend if you can do it, do do it. And then the second thing you're going to want to do, if you don't already know what lead code is, uh, I don't know what you're doing, you should know what it is, but it basically is a tool that you can use that's kind of similar to like the back of a math book where you have a bunch of problems and a bunch of different things, but it's much better because there's a discussion topic with other people studying, there's uh, answers that sometimes are provided, it's pretty good. So let's just say for example, you are studying for an interview at Microsoft, you want to get a job at Microsoft, what you want to probably want to do is, is basically come here and go through the top questions that are listed for Microsoft and just for reference you could also use blind it's a pretty useful tool um, I'd say like try not to become suicidal seeing that people make a million dollars a year and they're under the age of 25 it is what it is some people get lucky um, 
But basically, you can ask people, hey, you, the, anyone that works at Microsoft or anyone studying for Microsoft, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the blind top 75 questions, and I'm also going to do the Microsoft top questions. And just ask them, is there any other resources that you think are useful? I did this for Google. I did this for Amazon. I did this for Facebook as well. And sometimes give you, they'll give you some feedback. Sometimes they'll tell you, you know, give me your total compensation to get out of the thread. Either way, you're going to get a response, whether it be positive or negative. And that might be a good guiding light for you. So for me, if you're kind of strapped for time, you have two months or less, I would recommend you go through the top 75 lead code problems posted by this guy on blind see where you're weak at see what you can improve and at the same time look at the top company questions for the company you're trying to apply to and see if you can understand it well enough and go through and by the way let me just say this is just a personal recommendation one thing that i've used and i like using is called lead hub it's like a chrome extension some college student made it it's pretty cool it basically takes all your submissions through lead code and just puts it in github and if you're a student and you're just starting to do the job hunt you could maybe use this as a part of your portfolio and the reason why i say this is because someone actually did do this he didn't use lead hub he was just doing it manually so i'm just saying if you want to do this and include on your resume you can if you already have experience i wouldn't recommend you do it but as a student it might be something positive that you know people see and they're like oh wow he's actually studying wow he's actually trying uh personally at my old company i actually had someone who did do this and he did a really good job and i was like damn like this guy look he's better than this guy like i wanted to tell him like don't apply to this guy because i was leaving i wanted to tell him like yo <laughs> don't come here you're too good um so it might be something that me personally i use it just to keep track of the work i've done and the different iterations um so I, it's just a recommendation if you want to use it. it's just a little bit of data collection um but with that being said now what i'd say is that if you have a little bit more time and you are someone who maybe you're doing this for the first time you have maybe six months maybe even more or let's just say you want to get better that way whenever you want to apply in the future you have less of a strenuous time i definitely recommend you go through and read this post by someone named edbert chan he has like a youtube channel he's really good dude like this guy like with the amount of people that give career advice on youtube like no offense a lot of them like get into a company as a new hire they're like they just got lucky and they're like oh dude you know just do this and this guy has really good work experience he's someone who worked at apple and then after working at apple he applied to a bunch of companies and this is how you know this guy's smart this guy got a buttload of offers and then he chose the one that aligned with his career the most like he didn't like like he got a google offer and he was like i don't care about the name i want something that's best for my career so this guy actually thinks because if you go to blind and ask people, like, I got a Google offer and a bunch of other things, they just blindly will tell you, like, Google is stupid. Why wouldn't you just work there? So he's someone that has really good advice. And if you want to, I think at this point, he gives free career coaching for students. And then for people who have jobs, you have to pay. So he, honestly, this guy, like, low-key, like, th this guy's a god. Um, and basically, he wrote up a guide talking about things that I personally agree with and things that I found out on my own, but I wish I just read this because then I would have known. One thing that he mentions that I think is extremely important is that he says that, he, he mentions that when you're studying for an interview, try to focus on problem areas and focus on, you know, design uh, patterns or problem patterns that are similar so you become strong in that area. So, for example, in this top 75 lead code questions, there's some problems that are under the binary tree. There's some problems that are unfortunately under dynamic programming. I hate that. Then there's problems under graph. Try to focus on that. Try to become as strong as possible in this. And the reason why I mention this is because for my first job in like March of 2020, I did this top 75 and I was just rushing it through. I was like, okay, let me do an array problem. I did three array problems. I'm like, okay, that's good enough. Let's go to binary. Let's do like three binary problems. Like I was trying to basically cast a wide net and do a lot of problems. And I don't think that works right because you're basically now rushing and you're just cramming. And say if you do by some miracle pass your next uh, on-site, you're probably going to forget a lot of the pieces that came previously. Um, and, it, and it might not be compounding education. It might be something that you just quickly do and quickly get a W or quickly get an L and then you don't have a great foundation. So I definitely recommend what he says is that look at the different problems. Like if this isn't enough for you, if using just lead code isn't enough for you, maybe you want to use something like grokking the coding interview where they give you a bunch of lit, length list questions or a bunch of graph questions, a bunch of breath first questions. Um, and for like design that usually what people use is grokking the design interview. I personally have used it myself. I think it's pretty useful. It's a little bit pricey. It's like $70 for a write up. 
But again, I mean, you could just pay for it and then keep it on your local and, you know, just save it as a PDF. That's what I did just because I think it's like $80 a year, which is like, yo, I already paid the money. Like, what do you mean? Like, how are you going to steal this information from me? So I just saved it as a PDF. Um, but in general, I think these are two useful resources. The blind top 75 just is like a barometer where to start, what to look at. And then once you get into the top questions at Microsoft or whatever company, you should be able to build a little bit of a foundation for yourself. And then obviously as you do this, you know, for every person it's different. It might work well for others, not work well for some. Um, for me, uh, where is my... Like once you're doing your problems and once you're doing these different pieces, you can then go ahead and add it to your different lists. And these different lists are pretty uh, important. And for me personally, I try to organize it based on different problem types. And it can be, you know, we just, you can, I, I started off just having a generic favorite, but then I was like, all right, this is going to become gigantic. I should just push it around and put it in different categories. <laughs> and one thing that's been useful is dynamic programming. One thing that's been useful is graph and greedy, just trying to put all these different problems in these different uh, pieces, uh, these different categories. And basically putting things that I think are useful, that I think will be uh, something that when I get another interview, I'll probably come back and try to review it. You know, if it's something very strong and in, and it's something that I think is like a no-brainer, maybe I'll just review it, look over my solution, and we could continue on. Or even like what I'm doing now for this um, Dijkstra problem. I haven't done Dijkstra in like maybe, I don't know, when's the last time I did this? This was like... Damn, that's a long time. So it's been about like seven or eight months. So I'll probably just try to go through here, see if I remember how to do Dijkstra properly in the same way that I did in the past and see if my strength is still there. Uh, unfortunately, this is kind of like one of those things where, you know, the longer you study, the longer you then have to refresh yourself once you get ready for an interview. And again, everything I'm saying is what I've done. I'm not a genius. You know, the most, my claim to fame is that I got to like a Google onsite I did an Amazon onsite. I was selected to do a Facebook onsite, but all the positions got filled before I could do it, so I never got to participate in it. And by the way, let me just say, now that I mentioned Facebook, um, Google and Amazon don't really give you a lot of resources. Like, they basically just tell you, like, hey, there's lead code, go do that. They don't really point in the right direction. But Facebook, surprisingly, they have a really cool, like, candidate portal like they have a website that once you get selected to do like a phone screen or like an interview they have like a question bank of a bunch of problems like for me there was like a bunch of heap questions there was a bunch of array questions so look how ask the recruiter like hey do you have any resources for me like i'm gonna look at lead code and i'm gonna look at like i don't know like these different websites even for me like i'll look at geeks for geeks sometimes and, and even if you have a lot of time if you have a buttload of time if you have like time that is out the wazoo uh, you might want to also type check out Code Signal. Now, Code Signal is not as good as Lead Code. It is free though. It is like technically free. Um, and honestly, the only reason I did this is because there was a lot of companies that use Code Signal. So, for example, Dropbox uses Code Signal. Um, Reddit uses Code Signal. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is because it might be good to like go through the different questions they have, go through the different items. Uh, for me personally, I've never really had a great code signal. Like when I started, this was like early in my interview process, so it was pretty crappy in my opinion. Um, but at the same time, they also do have like specific company challenges. I think Dropbox is here. Yeah, Dropbox. And it's like, it, it, it's it's kind of interesting. It's kind of like, um, I don't know. It, it's it's a good practice, I'd say. It's not as strong in algorithms as lead code is in some cases. Like a lot of these are like lead code easy or lead code medium. But I did it. I ended up doing it. There's like some like arcade center or something that I just got sucked in. I have no idea why I did this. To be completely honest with you, it was just like I was bored. I was like, okay, let me just do this. I did the intro of the 60 problems. It took me like a couple of days. Um, and you could check it out. It's something that I wouldn't recommend highly unless you have a bunch of free time and you're interested in it. Uh, but it might be something that's useful. The point I'm making is that there's resources everywhere and you can choose what you think is strongest and best. Uh, and do that and, and try to figure it out on your own. But as a starting point, I'd say look at Blind Top 75. Try to do the top company questions on lead code. And then when it comes to something like say you have a little bit more time, maybe check out someone like Edbert. He has a pretty cool YouTube channel. He has some different information. To be completely honest with you, like if you actually tried to do what this guy says, which is like 
be consistent in terms of like your performance, you probably become like <laughs> you would probably become like a, a big brain individual. Whereas for me, I'm more of the school of thought of I want to pretend to be smart to get into the job, and then once I'm in there, it's like all right, thank God, now I can turn my brain off again. So uh, I'd recommend that you check it out, you look at these different resources, and at the same time realize that everyone's learning process is different. You might find something that's even better. And if you do, and if you feel so confident and you feel like it changed your life, go ahead and share because this top 75 lead code questions, like everyone shills it, but it's actually a pretty cool list and it's actually really nice that this person took the time out to make this. Uh, and literally three years later, this is still helping a lot of people and this is something that's really you know, helpful to the people who are interviewing. So whoever did this, yo, whoever the guy who made this post, yo, if this guy doesn't get into heaven, then no one has a chance because this guy is like saving lives with this post right here. So... Check it out, have any questions, you can ask on Blind. Uh, or if you want, you could obviously ask on CS Career Questions on Reddit. But I like Blind a little bit more because people are rude and mean and, and it makes me feel uh, like a lesser human being. So you get something out of it, you know what I mean?